To say that Chinese companies have come a long way might be a gross understatement. Some say that they are passing right by Korean companies and more. Formerly known for low prices, Chinese companies have added some surprising innovations in their product offerings in recent years. On this week's Upfront, we discuss the continuous rise of the Chinese companies and its expected impact on the global economy. Mobile World Congress 2016, the world's largest exhibition for information and communications technology, successfully closed on February 25th. China attracted the most attention at this year's Mobile World Congress. China's electronics manufacturers like Oppo and Huawei announced their latest technologies, which have caught the eyes of the global society. Also, 171 Chinese companies, which was the largest number among the participating nations, joined the event. Chinese companies have now taken a huge leap forward within the global market. Chinese manufacturers used to promote its price competitiveness by emphasizing low personnel expenses as well as cost of production. Production of fake and imitation products with low quality showed the limitations of its technical skills. However, situation has been rapidly changed. For instance, 7 out of top 10 global smartphone manufacturers are from China. It means China holds 40% share of the global smartphone market. Chinese companies have emerged as a dark horse in the global market, along with its low price and advanced technology. An increasing number of Chinese companies have competed with renowned global companies, along with the enlarged market share and sales growth. And such progress has been made in a variety of fields, including smartphones and electric vehicles. Active M&A deals with global companies with advanced technologies and great support from the government have been the contributing factors behind China's rapid rise. Upfront discusses China's ascendancy in the global market as well as the success factors. For today's discussion, we're joined by a great panel of experts in the studio. Uh, first, we're joined by uh, Lee Song Yong, CEO of Bain and Company, a global management consulting company, and uh, Kim Young Han, a professor of economics in uh, Songkyungkwan University, uh, who is also an expert in international industrial cooperation. And we're also joined by uh, So Yong Gu, a professor of marketing and retailing at Sungmyung Women's University, who is also an expert in global marketing. Thank Hi. you for joining. Let's start with the notion of the competitiveness of China. Made in China, it used to mean that uh, low price, but you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of a, 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 a point of attack uh, for their products has been pretty uh, clear. But how do you assess the current uh, uh, Chinese competitiveness? Um, it's just amazing what they've done in the last few years. Uh, uh, there is a misnomer about the definition of uh, uh, cheap products. Uh, in today, in the globalization, there are no such thing as cheap products. The interesting about this product is that once you reverse engineer these products, what you see is that you tend to source from the same OEM manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So a good example is uh, LG Panel, which is one of probably the best in the world. Who's using LG Panel? Well, a lot of Chinese players. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what's inside of this product, Chinese products, a lot of these are non-Chinese products. And this is driven by the globalization. Mm -hmm. So this is different from what we've seen five, six years ago. So this is just perception out there, but in reality, these are good products. That's what makes Chinese so competitive, in addition to the cheap price. Mm -hmm. So the question is then, how could they make these quality products in such a low price? I and see. that is a competitive advantage they have. The other factor that's coming in, which is different from five years ago, is the technology cycle, which starts with the prototype, premium sector, then the mass sector. Mm -hmm. This usually took three to five years. 
But technology cycles so fast from the prototype mass production takes only one or two years. Mm -hmm. So the guy who's inventing this, they cannot wait for the Korean manufacturer to take place and then Chinese to take place. They just cannot wait that long. So they have to basically phase in the Chinese place much e earlier in mm -hmm. their cycle, which makes Chinese players much more competitive against the Europeans and, uh, and um, uh, the US players. So by the time he hits the mass market, mm -hmm. he's almost six months, one year after the technology is introduced, not I five, see. seven years later, uh, which see. means their product line is a um, is pretty good products. Mm -hmm. The other factor that's coming in effect is that who's really using the functionality of these products? For example, handsets. Uh, the, in our study, Bain, has, Bain and Company has done a study on this one. About only 10 or 15 percent of the functionalities today available to the consumer, they only used about 10 percent of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have a lot of whistles and bells uh, of uh, premium phones, but no one uses it. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have. So nice if you actually compare the essential functionalities of the Chinese uh, products and U.S. products or, or Korean products, from a consumer standpoint, other than brand imaging, it's identical products. I see. And Mr. that's Lee what makes the Chinese products so competitive. I mentioned uh, several important aspects. Uh, Professor, Professor Kim, uh, I mean, the the fast ascendancy of uh, Chinese uh, mm. products and companies, mm. uh, in some sense, uh, is it really surprising? Uh, Korea has done it, uh, Japan has done it. Uh, what's different about the Chinese ascendancy? Well, I would say the first difference would be the speed of mm -hmm. their taking up the leading industries. And considering the size of the economies, they currently, so when you consider their size of populations and all the territories and general market size, it's a simply, what, as has been explained by Mr. Uh, Lee, it's a simply amazing. Say at that scale, they, the fact that they could take up the all leading industry <coughs> in such a short period of time would be such an amazing issue, uh, it's kind of phenomenon. And another issue would be, what they have done is not just kind of their own performance, they are actually reshuffling the whole structure of the global economy, so-called division of labor, division of industry, not only in East Asia, but also in the whole global what division of industry is a reshuffling, mainly due to the kind of change and impact made by the China. So, for example, uh, well, South Korean industry, leading industry, export industry, has been uh, dependent on say quite a what stable division of labor between China and Korea. We, uh, South Korea has mainly focused on developing so-called what uh, focused on the R&D sector. Uh, yeah, and also the major technology intensive production uh, kind of uh, units. And we have uh, say mainly split the division of labor, so-called the mass production process has been mainly taken by the a subsidiary in China, all those traditional so-called industrial sec kind of strategy has been is kind of changing rapidly since China has already taken up uh, and also in some sense overtaken the all the technology leading edge, te what kind of uh, high leading edge technology sectors and so traditional division of labor, division of industry between China has been between China and Korea has been reshuffling quite fast. So we can say it's a real serious, in some sense, risk to the general competitiveness of mm -hmm. Korean industry. There seems to be an innovation, not only in the, the product offerings itself, but the way we biz do business uh, seems to be really changing in Chinese companies. Uh, Professor uh, So, uh, how about in terms of global brands, I mean, Chinese company's reputation has been, as we established it before, uh, cheap products, but now it's changing uh, the way they're shaping the product lines. The, the reputation of Chinese company, has it been changed? Uh, we hear uh, these names like uh, Dongfang Motor Company, Alibaba, Huawei, Xiaomi. Uh, it seems like they have uh, gained uh, some uh, global standing. Right, it is very interesting to observe the uh, rapid growth of uh, Chinese companies such as Hayo, Xiaomi, Renova, and particularly mobile-based uh, uh, companies such as we call BAT, uh, Baidu, uh, Alibaba, 
and Tencent. Mm -hmm. Such uh, uh, companies uh, made a uh, rapid growth. I think partly two reasons. One is uh, co consumer uh, perceptions uh, toward uh, made in China product changed quite a bit because uh, uh, Chinese product not only excel in uh, product quality, but also they are very good in design. Mm. So mm. made in China beforehand, it is rather regarded as a cheap product, but now it is a wow product. Mm. Wow, the price is very cheap, and uh, design and functionality is quite okay. And also for the last five to eight years, global economy has been damped, and consumer confidence is very low. Mm -hmm. So we call bottom of pyramid, BOP market is growing very rapidly, you know? It means low price product market is uh, growing very rapidly. So made in China product has a big room for uh, growth mm -hmm. uh, using that kind of a growing market. So nowadays, uh, made in China uh, image is rather wow, rather than uh, very cheap. I see. Yeah. So let, let's focus on kind of a case example, sure. uh, Xiaomi. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were dubbed as a uh, uh, mistake of the continent, right. which is actually in a form of accolade, right. saying that Chinese products are supposedly cheap and very uh, right. not good. Right. But the Xiaomi product has been surprisingly good. And that's why people were saying it was a mistake of China. Right. But yeah. it doesn't seem like now a, a mistake know. anymore. Right. Right. Now, how popular has Xiaomi been yeah. in the global market and how so, did they achieve that? Um, I mean, if you look at some of the, what we call the poster childs of the last five year uh, innovative companies in China, mm -hmm. uh, we, we tend to pick a lot of B2C companies because that's what consumers see and feel. But a lot of their B2B companies, they're getting very, very strong. Uh, but just pick on Xiaomi, the two companies that come into our mind is the uh, Huawei mm -hmm. and Xiaomi. Uh, Hawaii is a, actually is a much more, um, uh, much more innovative. Uh, you know, they are uh, Asia's uh, Cisco, basically. Mm -hmm. And they're growing at about 27% per year uh, for the last few years. And it's an extremely uh, uh, popular company. Uh, the issue with them is more of a kind of backbone. So you don't see it as a switch gears and mm -hmm. things like that. So people don't see it. Uh, Xiaomi, however, uh, people tend to see it because they have a lot of new products, robotics and, and, and so on. I think the two things that's different from the other uh, Chinese companies that is a, the product innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a, uh, it's a different from the way they uh, innovate product. It is a similar to uh, Sony in the 1980s, is that a lot of their products are outsourced. So it's not made in, within Xiaomi, but it's done by the different what we call the smaller companies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then they, they, they combine and integrate it. So um, that's, that's different. Uh, the second thing they're different is the modular design concept. It's uh, something that, um, uh, it's not a new concept, but they are doing it much more rapidly and uh, different from the other companies. So, uh, you know, you look at their, their robotics, uh, let's say Segway, uh, similar to Segway they just introduced, is almost quarter of the price. Mm. And then everybody's saying, well, how could they do it in a quarter of the pricing? There must be something wrong. And they use the reverse engineering of these products. And a lot of these components are same components. Mm. So there must be doing something that's a very, very uh, cheaper in terms of uh, you know, manufacturing cycle, in terms of vendor management, in terms of uh, uh, involving vendors early in the design phase. Mm -hmm. And these are new things. So a lot of these uh, product innovation companies are actually copying uh, Xiaomi's uh, new design concept. I see. And this was, that's what makes uh, Xiaomi a very, uh, very formidable threat. And not only uh, mm -hmm. they're formidable threat in one sector, uh, they're a little bit like a Samsung, they're in everywhere. Right. They're, they're right. Uh, cells, they're into the uh, robotics, they're into the uh, you know, they are starting getting to white goods and brown goods as mm -hmm. well, the kitchen mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. uh, Xiaomi uh, and other companies as well, uh, especially Xiaomi has set up a, a sole uh, distributorship in Korea. Uh, it seems like they're targeting uh, Korean market, which is mm -hmm. considerably smaller uh, mm -hmm. than the uh, Chinese market. Mm -hmm. Do you see any significance in uh, trying to enter into a Korean market, which is after all has been uh, kind of apex of IT industry these days? Well, a real threatening kind of aspect, mm -hmm. we can say. And as has been explained by uh, professors, say, 
what the so-called another phenomena taken by the uh, Xiaomi strategy would be, as you explained, uh, in some sense, they can be interpreted dumping in terms of price in comparison to other competitors. Their price, as it explained, almost half price of the other competitors. What's going on there? And their strategy, they are arguing that uh, they are selling their product just at marginal uh, product price. I see. And so with no real kind of profit margin there. And they argue that what they really expect from their strategy would be they claim themselves as uh, so-called, not just a manufacturing, manufacturer of the smartphone, they claim themselves as uh, internet companies or mm. software companies. So they are simply targeting to distribute their what kind of uh, product as a means to really later stage uh, their massive sales of their software or other internet related their products. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's one way we can in, uh, uh, kind of understand why they can sell at such a low price, at almost at half price, uh, in comparison to other competitors. That's uh, one real feature we should be what worried. And say, so, well, in, in, say in case of the Korean manufacturer of smartphones, they are still uh, claiming themselves as just a simple manufacturer, and they cannot really connect their product with other software or, or internet products, so which might make much more what kind of larger uh, kind of si size of the uh, value we can expect in the future business. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we should focus on their new way of doing business, so called selling the product just as in what kind of stepping stones of their future uh, business, mm -hmm. mainly mm -hmm. focusing on software industry and other internet related industries, so called, especially focusing on uh, internet of things. They mm -hmm. are uh, kind of expanding their business to almost everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all kind of what uh, uh, issues related to uh, when improving the quality of life is they are claiming their s field I of see. business. Yeah. Not just price, but the innovations in products and innovations in how to do business and it seems to be what Chinese companies are doing. Uh, how do we explain uh, such a remarkable growth of the Chinese companies, uh, not only in uh, smartphones, but, but also other industries such as home appliances, uh, we have uh, medical products and automobiles and so forth. Now, we, we had a chance to meet an expert uh, and hear more about uh, the explanation of what happened to Chinese companies. Let's take a look. Uh, Korean mobile industry is now facing very critical uh, point. For instance, uh, even two years ago, the Korean company's market share in Chinese market are uh, maintaining at the second level after uh, Apple's market. But last year, uh, Chinese companies uh, uh, such as uh, Xiaomi and Huawei is uh, becoming the first and second largest uh, market shareholders in China market. Also, the, in global market also, uh, still uh, Samsung is maintaining at the first uh, largest market shareholder, but uh, Chinese uh, uh, Xiaomi and the Huawei is uh, 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 catching up very rapidly uh, global market share. Therefore, the last year, uh, Samsung profit or, uh, in the uh, mobile phone production sector declining very rapidly, uh, almost uh, one third uh, compared with the previous year. That is a kind of a, a very important uh, situation uh, to the Korean uh, mobile phone uh, companies uh, because of the emergence of the uh, Chinese uh, uh, mobile phone company. How to maintain, how to make consumers demand our high price uh, mobile phone? That's very important one. That's, uh, that's uh, strategy is uh, uh, to make uh, customers uh, demand our uh, mobile phone with the help of uh, very good software. For instance, uh, whenever uh, customers uh, buy mobile phone because uh, to enjoy to, to enjoy our software embodied in the mobile phone. For instance, uh, uh, mobile game or mobile uh, music or more, uh, webtoon, etc. So the, how much interesting, amazing software is embodied in the mobile phone? It is very important one. Therefore, recently, uh, Mobile World Congress uh, held in uh, 
Barcelona in Spain, uh, Samsung showed uh, very important uh, software, so-called VR, uh, virtual reality. Uh, that means the Galaxy 7, with the Galaxy 7, customers can enjoy VR. That means the very important uh, software uh, to be enjoyed by the customers. So the, nowadays, our important strategy, even though the uh, Korean uh, price of a mobile phone is expensive, but if we embodied, embody very important uh, software in mobile phone, uh, worldwide uh, customers cannot buy, buy our uh, Korean mobile phone. Let, let's go back to success factors, uh, Professor Shao. You mentioned that the design aspect of it uh, has been one of the strength in Chinese companies, which is kind of surprising that Korean companies over the years uh, was pretty slow to realize the design and the software part of it is what really sells, uh, learning from Apple's example. I think uh, Chinese companies such as Xiaomi has a more global look than mm. uh, Korean companies mm. has. And they are dealing with the whole uh, world market. And uh, why they are penetrating to Korean market, as Mr. Lee told us, uh, I think Korean market is rather symbolic. We are uh, regarded, uh, regarded as the most advanced IT country in the world. And so if you penetrate Korean market, they will gain some uh, insight uh, mm -hmm. from this mm -hmm. experience. And Xiaomi now uh, made a, uh, this mm -hmm. year, uh, decided to come to Korea with a collaboration with a Korean distributor called Yaomi. Mm -hmm. And they are not only selling uh, external batteries, they are selling uh, uh, Bluetooth speakers and air purifiers, and also they are selling external batteries, you know. Mm. So uh, they have a product portfolio now. So it is quite a threatening, you know, to Korean uh, IT establishment. Right. And also in China, they have a really very well developed uh, mobile ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So uh, given that system, uh, winner takes all economy is ruling a mobile economy. So uh, even though there are some argument about uh, only you know few companies dominating mm -hmm. uh, those market mm -hmm. and uh, Xiaomi, Lenovo, uh, uh, Huawei, those companies are really uh, very uh, threatening to Korean IT establishment. I think. I see. Uh, that's uh, so something that we've learned f uh, after trial and error. But it seems like that they went to school. <laughs> Uh, in looking at other uh, countries' examples. But uh, let's uh, talk about the one, one of the things that Mr. Lee actually uh, pointed out, the product cycle. Uh, it usually takes uh, uh, more than a month to uh, get uh, consumer uh, feedback and opinions and, and put it back to the, the product design. But in Chinese companies' case, they say that it takes less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like they're really fast mm -hmm. in reacting to and mm. first of all, collecting uh, the mm. opinions of the, mm. the public on the product. Mm. Uh, is that another point of innovation? I would say that aspect is closely related to uh, the, the so-called secret, how Chinese company could make such a surprising kind of performance and they could succeed not just in Chinese market, but also in global markets. Mm. So uh, just as you described, their doing way of doing business is something different from other market uh, leaders like uh, what Apple's or Samsung's say. Apple's are actually dominating the consumers. They are directing what should be done mm -hmm. by, from the consumer side. They design everything. They make the whole the ready-made kind of product uh, uh, say kind of types and what consumer has to do is to learn how to use as mm. has been designed by the producer but what Chinese firms are doing is they are interacting with mm. the consumers mm. and they are making uh, producing designing the product producing the product and doing the marketing best based on the inputs from the uh, consumers that, that would be a real kind of stocking quite a, a stacking uh, kind of aspect, uh, a new aspect, new strategies, and, and mm -hmm. new strong point of Chinese firms. And another uh, secret for the success of Chinese firm would be, or the backgrounds of Chinese surprising c c performance would be, they are based on kind of real untested market with mm -hmm. un kind of 
imaginable size of the uh, market, say Chinese market, is actually has been uh, totally closed by the and dominated by the Chinese government. Right. And lately, uh, they are starting to open their market, but quite in a controlled way. So they have a real what starting uh, kind of jumping starting bad testing bad. Uh, quite strongly protected by their government, mm -hmm. depending on the government strategies. So they, as long as they can make some marginal contribution in terms of technology or brands or other kind of marketing strategies, they have huge advantages in terms of they have preference, uh, advantage, privilege to test in their own relatively protected market, mm. huge size of market. So the small, real marginal contribution ends up with real surprising, spectacular outcomes like Xiaomi, kind mm -hmm. of, who has studied with almost no real genuine, their own genuine uh, technology. Right. How could they perform in such, kind of such an amazing outcome in five years? I would say that you kind of strong economies of scale based on their market size was another story mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. they could make such a surprising success. As uh, Professor Lee mentioned, the technology side is a very surprising uh, aspect. I mean, price we would understand. Uh, way to do business, they've learned from other examples, but the technological innovation is something uh, that cannot be uh, achieved overnight. Uh, for example, Oppo has launched a, uh, which is a mouthful, voltage open loop, multi-step constant current charging, which is dubbed as a super uh, VOOC. Uh, that is one of the examples of innovations that the Chinese companies uh, came about. Um, do you think that this is kind of one-off uh, episode, or do you think that the technological innovation is a general trend in Chinese companies? Yeah, so uh, just before I answer that question, let me just get back to um, the one comment that he made. Um, in terms of customer interfacing skills, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the thing about you have to remember about Chinese companies are these are less than 20 year old companies, right? right? And if you look at how many companies of this scale exist in Korea that started 20 years ago, there are not many. There are only about mm -hmm. three players, right? Uh, so a lot of the companies we have in Korea started with the B2B uh, uh, background. Mm -hmm. So they do not have this a customer interfacing uh, mechanism built into their DNA. So mm -hmm. This is something new. Mm -hmm. Whereas these companies started with the customer requirements designed into products. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a part of the DNA, which makes them much more uh, receptive to the market change needs than Korean companies. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is something that a lot of Korean companies do not try to change, uh, but it's a, it's a hard change. It is mm -hmm. a hard change. Behavior. Is that a function of China already having a very big domestic market as opposed to It is domestic, Korea but I, I a little bit disagree with the, with the professor in that it is protected market, but it's much more competitive to China than Korea. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you have a Korean company, a large table, let's say, it makes a product and I don't know, they may be overpricing it. It's hard for us to find a substitute competitor, mm, which makes mm. a similar product with a similar quality. I well, see. in China, if this is not Xiaomi, you will find other companies mm. with a similar quality, mm. maybe a different brand. It's much more competitive market. That's mm. why they have to be much more uh, receptive to the customer needs and requirements mm. in China mm. than in Korea. Mm. But it's something that I think Korean customers, uh, uh, I think we are receptive to the global customers but I think the Korean company needs to be much more receptive to the Korean customers, which is one of the highest demanding customers in the world. Uh, on that. Professor Kim, purely on the technological side, uh, do you think that Korea, uh, Chinese companies have kind of uh, have this uh, some framework already set up because of the, the competitive nature of the Chinese market and their outlook on the global uh, market? Well, that issue is, I think, closely linked to the uh, what is provided by the government as an incentive mm. to mm. pursue their technological innovations. And, well, there are many criticisms against the kind of so-called efficiency of the government, massive government expenditure on the R&D sector by the uh, Chinese government. What they are doing is, uh, in terms of absolute amount, I would say they are almost reaching to the top level of the R&D expenditures. And when you look at, at their share of the R&D expenditure mm. by the government expenditure uh, with respect to GDP, they are almost uh, already higher than the EU and getting close to the level of the United States. So mm -hmm. 
regardless of the so-called issue of the what efficiency of that expenditure on R and D, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. those what kind of what uh, active involvement government in supporting uh, corporate mm -hmm. uh, what innovation in terms of providing real basic uh, R and D support almost free support mm -hmm. and quite a strategic support uh, as a free support uh, by the government uh, sector would, I would say, play a real big role. One of, one of the things that Chinese, uh, Chinese government actually uh, encouraged is a uh, mergers and acquisition strategy. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this could be partly the answer how the technological innovation could come about pretty easily. You can grow your own, but you can buy it. And the Chinese companies, in fact, have gone out and bought a bundle. Uh, uh, this year alone, they've spent about $70 billion worth of m as in January and, and February, uh, which is about 80% of the whole, whole amount they spent uh, last year in 2015. It shows that they are really active in the m and market uh, in, in the global stage. Now, uh, is that an intentional uh, strategy, or is it, do they kind of seize upon the idea that this is how they can quickly uh, uh, equip themselves with the new technologies and new, new ideas? Uh, M&A-wise, uh, Chinese companies are very uh, eager in M&A uh, because uh, it is the easiest way to, for growth. And not only Chinese companies are buying companies around the world, uh, Chinese consumers nowadays buying everything around the world in European countries, for example, mm -hmm. may, uh, most of the retail sales coming from uh, visiting Chinese rather than local dwellers. Mm. And so now Chinese companies uh, and also Chinese consumers are the biggest buyers uh, in the world at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I but just want to comment on that one, but sure. um, you know, the M&A of a hard SS is relatively easy. Rock mm. is rock, building is building, mine is mine. It, it mm -hmm. really doesn't matter who owns it. Um, you know, the the, the M&A they're doing in the last few years is uh, basically is for the legal reasons. The, today, the patents are written such narrow versions, mm -hmm. so uh, it's almost impossible to develop that on your own without bre uh, breaching on that, that, that patent mm -hmm. by someone else. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's almost a requirement to have that patent, which is easy ways to buy them, right? But the jury is still out whether they'll be successful. Now, <clears throat> Japanese companies have never successfully done m and right. Korean companies, you know, to be honest, have not done a successful m and Chinese companies have not done successful m and in a big scale. Mm. The mm. part of the issue with this is how do you manage this um, uh, soft m and what we call the software m and So you acquire soft software engineers. Mm -hmm. You're buying a lot of these uh, engineers, right? And uh, that's hard to manage. Right. Yeah, that's hard to manage. If right. the engineers defect to the other companies, you know, you're left with uh, nothing, right? So I think that's the challenge. And uh, we have not seen a successful M&A of a large scale mm -hmm. by uh, mm -hmm. Chinese players mm -hmm. uh, up to now. Uh, but probably but that that's something that we did. Yeah, yeah. explore this point because it's something called the, the post-management, uh, post-merger management, yeah. PMM. And that's a very uh, difficult concept. I mean, it's easy on the paper, but uh, you, you are combining these two cultures together and there are a lot of differences that you have to adjust. So as you said, the, the, the success case is, pr is pretty hard to come by. And the same is true for Korean companies over the years. But let's turn to the, one of the big items that we need to talk about, the, the role of the government. I mean, we know that Chinese companies, uh, especially uh, state-owned companies were uh, helped tremendously by the, the policy of the Chinese companies. But it, it also came out that a lot of companies that are successful cases that we talk about are not really SOEs, they're private companies. Right. Now, Professor So, do you uh, uh, kind of care to uh, comment on what Chinese government is doing to encourage these companies to be global and to be successful? Uh, actually, I have no uh, specific ideas on Chinese government uh, mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. uh, in grooming uh, Chinese economy at the moment. But uh, I can say, uh, such as Alibaba, the most uh, one of the most uh, success story uh, from China, uh, or Baidu, and uh, I think I'm sure <coughs> mobile ecosystem in China uh, most uh, well developed, uh, where uh, private companies are grooming up mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Many Korean uh, mobile entrepreneurs uh, 
observed uh, Chinese market and they said uh, Chinese are more advanced than Korean mobile ecosystem by two or three years. And also online shopping industry is uh, very well developed in China. Mm -hmm. So because uh, there are many reasons, but one reason is delivery cost is very cheap. It's $5 less uh, in mega cities, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, online shopping industries nowadays, uh, particularly young Chinese consumers are very eager to shop online rather than offline. Mm -hmm. So uh, this consumer base also enable for private companies to uh, groom up mm -hmm. and grow very rapidly. I see. So. The role of the government is, I think that the Professor Kim has mentioned that before, um, but, but this particular per, uh, focus, actually. Um, we also talked about how, in some ways, the Chinese company's ascendancy is, is similar to a Korean Jebel's. Mm -hmm. um, do, do we expect a similar kind of uh, problem side uh, in Chinese uh, companies. I, I mean, one of the things that they worry about, people worry about, is that there's an oligopoly of companies that is kind of uh, pushing out the, the small and uh, mid-sized business uh, firms in, in, in China. So we, we've seen that kind of aspect as well. So uh, are we seeing that the China would be replicating some of the, the, the problems that Korea is experiencing? Well, the so-called market concentrations or the increasing oligopoly power by the leader in each industry, uh, that issue, I would say, would be different depending on the different sector of the industry. So in case of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. so-called, uh, say, newly uh, developing industry, which we can describe as so-called network industries, network-based industry like software industry or IT industry, they are typically, as described in textbook, they are network industry. And network-based industry is highly likely to be what concentrated, mainly due to the, uh, the, the types of the property of the industry itself. Mm -hmm. A very strong network ex externality effect will eventually end up with the increasing uh, what market power by the market leader, like the case of the Microsoft in terms of the operating system industries. So that's something we can understand as a natural trends of the uh, industry as a, some real market leader takes the increasing market power in that industry, mainly due to the network externality issues. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not that negative aspect we can think about. The, the real kind of some side effect or bad aspect of the oligopoly taken uh, by the market leader in Chinese economy would be mainly, say, can be uh, explained by the strong government involvement, mainly related to state-owned enterprise in heavy industry mm -hmm. and traditional manufacturing industry. So we can say, at least in, with respect to the latest, uh, recently kind of what, uh, rising industry in high-tech industry mainly, we, what we can describe as network industry, that kind of so-called strong oligopoly power kind of what, Picking at playing the major uh, market leadership cannot be a real serious problem, uh, mm -hmm. which might work mm -hmm. in future growth of the Chinese industry in that sector. The current state of the global market, where uh, uh, Chinese products have made a great progress, but uh, that poses, as we talked about, a, a great threat, or is it just a threat uh, uh, to Korean market and also Korean companies? L let's talk about kind of. Uh, measures we can take and the strategies that Korean companies can take. Domestic companies that have been leading the global electronics industry have faced a huge challenge along with the rise of the Chinese companies. Along with the rapid rise of low-cost mobile phones in China, Samsung has faced a big crisis, especially in the field of consumer electronics like TV and refrigerator. China used to be targeted by Korea as one of the largest consumer markets in the past. However, situation has been changed and China has now targeted Korea as its consumer market by enhancing its price competitiveness and improving technologies. IT field is the one that has been damaged the most along with the rise of China. Samsung Electronics, which has the largest share in the global smartphone industry, had to give its way to the Chinese companies. 
Chinese market has threatened the Korean IT companies by making inroads into the Korean market. Not only the IT industry, the semiconductor industry, which has taken a significant role in boosting Korea's export industry, has also faced a huge crisis. Semiconductor powerhouses like Korea and Taiwan have paid sharp attention to the Chinese government's recent announcement in terms of its plan to carry out a large-scale investment in the domestic semiconductor industry. China has spearheaded efforts to foster new industries, including the fields of semiconductor and display, by selecting seven fast-growing industries back in 2012. A fierce competition is also expected to take place in the automobile field, along with its combination with IT field and development of electric as well as eco-friendly vehicles. Chinese automobile companies like Oulun, Dongpyeong and Beijing Automotive Group has risen as emerging competitors within the global market by promoting its advanced quality, stability and low price. Chinese government has also provided full support for the Chinese companies, which have maintained a rapid rate of growth. China has unveiled Made in China 2025 plan by carrying out strategic tasks and priorities, which include boosting innovation capacity and strengthening quality. It is the 10-year action plan designed to transform China into a world manufacturing power like Germany and Japan by the year 2025. Chinese companies are expected to maintain their fast pace of growth on the strength of the active support from the Chinese government to boost its manufacturing sector. In order to better cope with the ongoing changes within the global market, there has been a growing need in Korea to increase investment in R&D and strengthen competitiveness by promoting higher value-added businesses. Boosting cooperation with Chinese companies has been suggested as another possible alternative. Now, as we discussed, uh, Chinese companies are real. They're threatened. They're not just uh, the price competitiveness, they have innovations and in how to do business and their designs and all those. For Korean companies, what do we do? Right, the Korean economy is in, uh, in uh, danger at the moment, as you mm -hmm. know, because the Korean economy in general is very damped. And the main reason, I would say, uh, look at this chart. Uh, Korean uh, number of customers, uh, we call aged 30 to 54 uh, customers, uh, major, consu major consumers, you know, aged 30 to 54. Uh, they are major consumers. The number is decreasing. Mm. Uh, it started uh, year 2012. Mm. Uh, now uh, the number is uh, 20, 20 million population, and now in uh, 15 years, the number will be dropped to 17, 17 million. I see. So it's uh, quite a uh, big uh, threat to Korean uh, consumer market. How can we uh, respond to it is uh, quite a big question. Now, uh, Mr. Lee, this is something that you, uh, I would assume, advise your clients often. Right, uh, right. And uh, probably you can take out your notebook and <laughs> share with us some insights. Sure. I mean, there, there are obviously a lot of strategies uh, we could deploy. And these are all uh, long-term strategies, obviously. If mm -hmm. you, you could do it in six months, someone would have done it already. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that China is a, um, you know, you need, you need to look at China uh, not just as a competitor, but as an opportunity for, mm, for us. Mm. Um, you gotta remember, you know, we've been uh, you know, living with China over 5,000 years, we've been trading China over 5,000 years, so this right. is not something new for us. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think uh, if we played our game, uh, I think um, uh, we have a clearly opportunity there. That said, uh, I, I think there's this one school of thought that we need to continue to innovate, take the high road strategy, mm -hmm. you know, the, to develop faster cycle, uh, advanced technologies and so on. Uh, which is fine. Uh, the jury is still out whether you could make money in that, in that strategy role mm. because they are mm. catching up really fast. The other strategy is take the uh, low, uh, low road, what we call the low premium strategy. This is a where uh, you don't go too much technology aspect, but stay with the uh, 
everyday things, mm. cosmetics, things like that. I mean, you could argue whether cosmetics is a high-tech item, but it is a high-margin product. Mm. It is a 60%, mm. it's basically you know, mixing water, so it's a 60, 70% margin products. Mm -hmm. And yet, you look at 1 billion Chinese, or if you look at next uh, 10 years, five years, there's going to be 1 billion middle class coming up, both Indonesia and China and the rest of Asia. Mm -hmm. They all require the essential things, hygiene stuff. Mm. And mm. that's an area where we could excel significantly. And we have the uh, brand, and that's difficult to build brand there. Mm. And we have the inroads there. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the actual product development cost versus the actual benefit, one of the highest uh, the ROI is the, in the service sector in the uh, entertainment. Mm. So you, mm. you, you build an entertainment, whether it's a TV <coughs> or songs and so on, you could distribute different channels, mm. different merchandise and so on. That I think we have, uh, we, we have done some work, but I think there's a long way to go. I, I think we're not even 1% of what the total potential market there. So right. there, there are ways to go through that. Mm. I think the other one that I think we have to be um, careful is that we can no longer call China China. A lot of multinational are calling China a second domestic market. Mm. So they simply call it second domestic market. So when you do forecasting for the next three years, they do their own domestic market and they call it second domestic market. Mm. That mm. drives their entire production schedule, entire marketing plans, you know, so on, sales plans and so on. So you have to literally put Chinese in all your, uh, um, all your functionalities. Uh, so whether it's R&D, your sales, and so on. So Chinese individual should be part of the Korean company culture. I and, see. and that has got to be integrated from mm. way, way early. Mm. And that mm. takes time. That takes time. Now, everybody talks about Beijing and Shanghai. That's only two out of 50 provinces right. you have. <clears throat> and the rest is a... It's very, uh, it's a, like you say, it's blue ocean. I see. So. There's a blue ocean idea that comes up uh, quite often. But now, they, they related to that, there, there's a news that Alibaba Group launched the Korean Pavilion uh, Tmall in their right. market. So this could uh, provide an opportunity for the Korean companies to penetrate right. into right. Uh, the Chinese market, which we heard so, so many failure stories uh, going mm -hmm. to uh, Chinese market, so that that might pro uh, provide another opportunity to do that. Do you, do you think that that's a, a, a pretty sizable strategy for the Korean companies to take? Well, I would say there would be just one example, one channel, possible channel for Korean uh, corporation sectors to mm -hmm. uh, penetrate the Chinese market. But say, well, I would agree in general that Chinese, all the uprising Chinese economies and competitors might be regarded, interpreted as a new chance. But Chinese economy, uprising Chinese industry, comp competitiveness of Chinese industry can be regarded as a chance to Korean economy only when Korean uh, corporate sector has a so-called comparative advantage with respect to Chinese industries. Mm -hmm. The real threatening uh, issues recently what we can observe would be we are losing almost all compar uh, comparative advantage sectors with respect to China. Mm -hmm. There's a, well, mm -hmm. traditional Korean so leading industries, say like it's a major export industry like uh, shipbuilding, car maker, uh, automobiles, uh, and mobile phones, all those industries are actually we can be re, uh, we can describe as a loser with respect to uh, Chinese mm -hmm. competitors. Mm -hmm. Well, we can say as is descri described by Mr. Lee, <coughs> uh, some industry like cosmetic industry, entertain entertainment industries, they are doing okay, mm -hmm. but they are they take just a very small part of the whole Korean industries, mm -hmm. and we cannot expect mm -hmm. their performance as a real future of the Korean industry uh, for the sustainable growth of Korean industry. What we need to do is to reshuffle uh, uh, and renovate uh, the real genuine competitive needs of the major Korean industries. In today's discussion, it comes out, comes out over and over again that the Chinese threat in every sector, in every area, uh, they're, uh, they're the globally minded, they're, they're uh, making some uh, significant substantive changes. Now, we're almost out of time, but um, let, let me hear uh, that given the, what we have talked about, if you have advices, uh, not only they could be to the government or the, the companies that are uh, in the front line, 
what would be your advice? Well, <coughs> as has been discussed repeatedly, say not only say at the corporate sector, but also the government side, we should make clear how we can make Korean economy, Korean industry, Korean corporate competitiveness to be something different from Chinese uh, competitiveness. Mm. So we should define the target for the edge of the, our, our competitiveness. And then we should uh, what, make uh, what kind of intensive efforts mm. to build up that different uh, competitive edge of Korean industry. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's the, what we have uh, to focus on in the remains of our industry. More focused survival. and strategic. Right. So Professor Korea Sam. nowadays uh, regarded as a, a premium country uh, brand, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Asia. So utilizing or capitalizing this uh, Korea premium brand, uh, particularly in the area of uh, cosmetics and beauty industry and also cultural industry, culture industry, we have a, a lot of room for mm -hmm. improvement. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, using a premium country image, we can explore some uh, blue ocean, mm -hmm. in, particularly mm -hmm. in China market, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm personally neutral on China. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that we should learn and could learn from China. But, uh, you know, my, um, my personal opinion is enemies within China. Mm -hmm. As they faced a lot of domestic issues, these companies will have an uh, impact uh, mm -hmm. on those issues. And, uh, and I think if the jury is still out, uh, whether they will continue to grow at this pace. Uh, because they will inherently they're going to face the global consumers, mm -hmm. uh, which with the, uh, uh, the global standards. I think the Koreans are, are much more optimistic than Koreans because I think um, we have some smart people. <laughs> we have some smart people, and I think uh, you know what we're lacking is uh, we have a good venture startup, but we fail to expand beyond Korea. Right. So we have uh, some mm -hmm. of the great ideas. You know, a lot of this MP3 was actually starting in Korea. Um, you know, you look at a lot of the SNS stuff started mm -hmm. in Korea, but we have failed to take that to the global level. But if you find that, unlike that lock, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we have the capabilities. We, I really think we do. I see. Thank you for sharing your ideas today. A rise of Chinese companies and market offers some intense competition for Korean companies. But not only the competition, the col collaboration and the opportunity to uh, take advantage of the market is also there. Uh, with the ingenuity and also innovation, probably this is more of a good thing rather than just perceiving as threats. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>